Sometimes you left the lieutenants to say what you don't what know, you'd like, what, want what to you say. know what to say. And people know that. So all is when you open a project and it is purely a project for the purpose or the benefit of the people, it is clear. You leave it. Why do you want to say I'm doing it while people are seeing you? You are doing it. Why are you why are you constantly reminding the people? You see, I'm doing this for you. You see, I'm doing this for you. Then you say, okay, we can see you are doing it for us. Mm. Let it be. But that is the campaign element. And the, the, as I said, the thing about the campaign at this point, and let, let's look at it. We have a lot of issues about in the structure of the electoral process. Look at IBC, the way it is. In my mind, I don't know whether structurally IBC exists. One would have thought that at a certain level in, in, in government, we would be more concerned with making these structures uh, viable, looking at the issues that gave us problems in the past, the, the electoral system, the electoral justice. And that is what Handshake uh, is looking it's at. Supposed to be so, so if you are actively campaigning and looking ahead and not addressing these issues, then I can say that all you are interested in is, is the post. But let me say something that I said here. People must realize that if you are not very clear what you want to do with the position, even a presidential position, you can get there and be a great disappointment to mm. the people. All right. Professor, your thoughts on a campaign mode now and the fact that the deputy president, in his own defense, says that, well, for him, he's just launching projects. He's doing the work of a deputy president. He's the immediate um, deputy principal after the president. He's defying his leader, and Jubilee is dead. Why is it dead? When the president says it's no time for politicking and the deputy president goes out there with his brokers or MPs who benefit or part of the beneficiaries, people have been named as, most of them have been named as suspects in the ongoing battalion against um, uh, counterfeit, and then you dish out money without telling people where you've gotten this money from, then what else do you expect Kenyans to believe in? in? And then this rhetoric, the, the 17th century kind of rhetoric whereby you come to my home to please me, to slaughter a, a, a goat for me to, to, so that we can eat together. Who, who are you enticing? But equally on Raila's part, Raila has come up, yes, he's campaigning as well, but why, why hasn't Raila and Ruto issued a statement on the counterfeit and ongoing economic crimes, activities, corruption at the moment? Mm -hmm. These two people are actually in the same pot, and there's nobody who is bigger than the other. Ruto is campaigning, defying Uhuru, but he will be very disappointed that he may not be the president come 2022, because Kenyans know what kind of mediocre, mediocrity you're walking in. And secondly, I have to warn the Mount Kenya region, be very careful. You are the ones coming up to front, but you are fronting for your own disadvantage. When it comes to the presidency and the <laughs> learning from what you have known in the past, it's you who are rich, it's you who have the money, and don't cry when time comes. Look at what's happening in the country today. Some of you are just walking fools. I'm I can call you fools because you are singing the song of somebody who, whose character in terms of economic crimes being uh, uh, peddled in this country are wanting. They're questionable. And All right. I'm also let, asking the West. Let, mm -hmm. I'm asking the Western countries to be on the look, to freeze these guys, to freeze their properties, ban them from going to the US and UK, and if not, we are going to do it. We are prepared to die in this country for justice I think, I think to come. we have institutions and uh, we are all able to deal Those with the institutions are I, want, I want to make a, dis a distinction between what uh, Honor Buraila, uh, between Honor Buraila and Honor Ruto in this matter. Honor Buraila met with President Uru, and they said we want peace. Mm. And he has held back from his usual uh, uh, high power activities that would be called campaigning. And therefore, if he's not... And by holding back, you mean Raila, Honorable Raila. Raila, Honorable okay. Raila. Mm -hmm. So I think if you want to make a comparison, you should actually make a comparison between uh, Raila, Raila, Raila and Uhuru, mm. not Ruto. Mm. Because, because these are the two gentlemen that actually said, we want peace building to occur. Mm. Then you look at them, how are the two gentlemen behaving. And then if you want to look at their lieutenants, then you look at their lieutenants to tell you whether what they have said is serious, whether the lieutenants 
is following or le one lieutenant is running amok. Mm -hmm. And the Honorable Hayes said many times that even they have had discussions on even on the issue of corruption. So when a process is going on, which he said they, they have been discussed, part of what they've discussed and is going on, I think it's only fair that let's see how this process is going on mm -hmm. without coming up and making uh, high power statements about it. About that. So I, I wouldn't blame him mm. that he's not now coming out and leading us as troops in the streets about this because that's what we said we should stop. And that's so what I think it's been, was being very consistent. Yes. All right, uh, you want I, to say I, something? I, I want us to move on to the coast, but yeah, carry on. Yeah, I, I somehow disagree with uh, my friend, Dr. Nikal. Raila is a powerhouse. Raila is a man who can be defined in the next 14 centuries as an enigma, a man who can climb the mountain in reverse, but equally has a mouth, and he should not speak from two mouths, two sides of his mouth. The ongoing atrocities is a duty to every Kenyan, regardless of whether you have put mechanisms in place or not. Raila has not come up to condemn. He has not come up to issue a statement on corruption. And if he's waiting for whatever handshake to move on, he's equally very, very wrong. And I'm telling him, and I'm, I'm giving you a message to go and tell him, that it's high time Kenyans heard from him. If not, then I don't see whether there's any difference between Raila and Ruto. All right. Let and, me and, just and, suppose, and, I want to ask him one question. Just suppose that in their discussion, I wasn't there, mm. in discussion with, with, with the president, he said, look, we are going to, I would like this issue of corruption to be handled. And the president then says, well, we are going to handle it and you will see what is going on. When that comes mm -hmm. out and it is going on smoothly, I, th I don't think that's the time to come up and, and jump into the fray. Mm -hmm. That would be interference. It so be I, interference. I, I don't really blame him All for right, that. and uh, you're welcome to give us your comments and your thoughts on that. You may agree, maybe disagree, maybe you want to weigh in on that. But there's also been a scramble for the coast. We've had uh, the deputy president make a, a number of trips there. We had the president of the coast at some point. We also had the ODM meeting that took place in the coast last week. Uh, but there's been a scramble. But let's listen into what some of the leaders had to say about that. Then we can uh, hear what our panel has to say in regards to a scramble for the coast. Naomba viongozi wa heshima vyama vyao vilivyowapitisha katika bunge ama katika cheo walichonacho. Wananchi walipokupigia kura wamejua wanakupigia kura uko chama fulani. Lakini tusije hapa kuambizana sijui wale watu wanarukaruka watu wanafanya nini wewe baki uliko na sisi tutabakia kule tuliko. Hakuna mtu analazimishwa kuwa na rafiki. Vile watu wanasema Amepaa brown envelope. Sasa na wesi ulete yo white tuchukue. Shida yiko hapi. Sasa si tuakua tunajivita kila mahali. Tukienda tunasema, oh, baada 2022, wale walio hama watanguka. Mimi nataka ni kuambia ndugu yangu. 2022, mimi ndarudi kwa kitu. Tutakuwa tumepotosha watu wetu. Ikiwa siyasa zinazo kuja, tutakuwa bado kwa upande wa upinzani. All right, and Dr. Nikal, as much as we blame the deputy president, it sounds there like it was full throttle campaign there for ODM. No, I, I, you, you didn't get the point. The point is those who think there's some people who have moved and those who think they should not have moved. That's what it is. And in fact, what is actually bringing it is those who are now saying we are uh, going to campaign for Ruto and they're there for being seen. I think this is Asia Juma, this is the, the main issue here, mm -hmm. that she's now moved and saying I'm going uh, to campaign for the deputy president. Now, the, what the other lady was saying is that you know which party you are in. That is the people voted for you. The other people are coming and saying, we cannot be forced to be anywhere we are moving. Now, that really is saying one side has launched a campaign and are, are pulling away. The other side is just saying, look, let's stay where we are. I think that's what I got from that picture. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll say, this to me is the cost is the best example that the DP is not going around opening projects, is campaigning. And the tactics he has used is so simple. Anybody can see through it. It is like glass. Mm. Use other people to say what you don't want to say and sit there comfortably. Because what, in you your know presence, the, me the message <laughs> is being delivered. Mm. Uh, who can see this? Prof? But, but in discipline, that will not happen in the US, that will not happen in the UK. 
with an exception of the US, where Ronald Reagan, who was a Democrat, ran into republicanism. When I was trying to run for MP for Tottenham after the death of Barney Grant, uh, one of the cardinal principles and questions that I was being asked is, for how long have you been in the Labour Party? And who are you? I had to give my description and what have you, and I was just told, no, you are not fit to run into party policy. If you look at what is happening in the coast now, it tells us that we are still living in 1946. The people who have come into politics at that, in this particular era are people who are, uh, uh, who are concocted with money influence. Character of money is taking shape. If you look at what the lady said, Aisha Juma, that now she has moved from this party to this party or she has moved to support Ruto, nothing wrong with that, but she should be de-whipped because when you are a member of a party, and I'm a leader of the Roots Party of Kenya, and I see an errand member, there's a disciplinary mechanism, that person ought to be disciplined, and he has to defend, she or he has to defend himself and be shown the way. Politics is taking shape in, 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 in the coast. But what we don't understand is how much looted money is being poured in the coast, and that is obvious. Uh, well, one that we don't have evidence of. Dr. Nikau, mm -hmm. we have party uh, rules and regulations, but they are flaunted by our leaders, which, of course, leaves us wondering uh, how are they leading us if they're going to disregard party it, you know, rules it, and it's regulations. It's actually a sad thing. Again, as I said, uh, as I said, Ethnicity and corruption run together, mm. and they support each other. And, and even being in one party and then campaigning, obviously, for somebody in the other party, apart from just uh, breaking the party rules and norms, I think there are, there's an element of, corrupt, of being corrupt in principle. Impunity. Impunity there. Uh, so this lady cannot be in, this, in, our, in our party and then campaign for somebody else. Mm. Now, those are the kind of leaders that, that gives politicians the money. You remember the other time he said that all politicians are corrupt. I felt a bit uncomfortable, <laughs> but I kept quiet. It is people who have that kind of impunity Track that record. give a mm. picture that every young person now sees this is the party. That should not happen, and I think our party is looking at it. It's something that is being considered. Some disciplinary action should be taken. Honestly, if we, if we don't do that, then we'll miss party discipline. Mm. And you look at what is moving people. We cannot be in Upinzani in opposition next time. What does it tell you? That if you're in opposition, then as a people, you lose out in development or some benefits. Mm. It should not be that That either. should not be the case. Mm -hmm. All right, talking about politics and, uh, well, there are those who claim and say that Ruto is scouting for a running mate. And, of course, there, there is the notion that 2022 is too far away to be talking about. But we had some recent events which possibly would indicate maybe that be true. Let's listen in. Our son, Anaitua Peter Kenneth. Mnafikiria tumekuja tu hivyo hivyo. Si tumevuta aerial na tunaambia viongozi wetu tukiogozwa na Peter Kenneth tuangalie bele, tuunganishe Kenya. Lakini kitu ya maana sana nataka niseme. You have made the right decision to work with Deputy President kusema tushikane pamoja. Sisi tunakukaribisha kwa mikono yote. Professor, again, we look at principles, regulations, values. We do know that Peter Kenneth is one who differed greatly with Jubilee, especially as he was trying for the gubernatorial seat in Nairobi, and he felt that Jubilee was not uh, working right. But here he is now coming back. And of course, that leaves the question mark in Kenyans, or in many people, that uh, where are the values? What, on what grounds had you disagreed with Jubilee? And was that resolved now that you're back to Jubilee? Peter Kenneth, at, at the moment, has no standing, has no moral value. Is it Peter Kenneth or is it just generally I, I'm, I'm speaking of Peter Kenneth because I know him. But it, it seems uh, a, a broader let, uh, a problem with our politicians. No, it's an individualistic desire. If a man comes out after having been de-whipped, having been thrown out by the very, very hand that threw him out, why is he now coming back to the very, very hand that rejected him? Religiously speaking, if he was a Roman Catholic priest, or if he was in the Anglican Church, he would have been dethroned. He's a man who has no moral standing and moral principle. He's not principled at all. If you do miss that way, and then you are calling me back to come and stand and dance at your whims, mm. that actually shows the kind of character and weaknesses that you have. He's a man who cannot command the army. He's not a man who can stand and be the president and say, well, 
if a shot is fired against my country, I will come in as commander in chief and do what have you. That's the weakness of some of these politicians. Politicians who are integrated into greed, power hungry and power thirsty, without principles, will always do what Peter Kenneth has done. He is not remembering what happened to him recently. He's not man enough for me even to, for me even to talk about him. Uh, he, he is a disgrace <laughs> to the Kikuyu community. Uh, I don't know how the Kikuyu community comes in yeah, there because, because really he's, he's a politician. Uh, and can, can I substantiate before he says? If you look at the members of parliament, and some of them are very good friends of mine. They are from Muranga. We have had a president, two presidents from Kiambu, we have had a president from Nyeri, and now Murangans are coming up and saying, if it is not the, the, the senator in Muranga, it but must be somebody you peddling from the there. same, the same I, I, uh, politics yes. when you say uh, that he's a disgrace to the He's a disgrace because, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I'm coming to. Uh, common sense must prevail all the time. Here say it's not what I'm relying on. These are facts. Because if you look at the people fronting him, they have been heard before saying that now it's our turn in Muranga to produce a deputy president or to produce a president. Does it mean that presidents will be going into Rift Valley, walking, then coming into Mount Kenya and going back like that for the next 60 years? The answer is no. But Peter Kenneth should rethink. And if you want to be a man of integrity, he should not follow the likes of Murukomen. Otherwise, he's cooking his own goose. All right, Dr. Nika. Again, uh, Peter Kenneth is somebody I've had a lot of respect for. I think in the first political, he's done very well. When he was an MP, I think his development record was pretty good. And actually, uh, a lot of people, uh, including me, had very high hopes on him. The fact that he didn't manage to come back, in my view, should not, ma should not make him start to look at ways that is cutting uh, on his previous uh, Track record. Track record. Mm. And what you can also see is being wooed. If you looked at uh, Tumetafuta, that is what? Tumeangalia. Mm. You yeah. don't see this as coming from Peter Kenneth. You see it from people who are looking at political alignment and looking for people. And if I were Peter Kenneth, I wouldn't at this point come out. That is the kind of discussion I would go into very quietly to see what position will come out leaving my track record and my integrity mm -hmm. intact. intact. Mm -hmm. The truth is, as it is coming out, it is actually bringing his in integrity down and literally rubbishing his track record. He actually had a national stature at one point mm -hmm. when he was the, I think, member for Gatanga? Yes, sir. Yes, MP he had a Gatanga. national stature. Now, again, when you say we have to metafuta, who is we? Mm -hmm. Again, he's being, he's being cornered in a, in a tribal enclave. And as I said, the, the people around some, the people around the DP are not doing him any good. Because again, he's just saying, we can look at we, the two tribes. That is the problem. And I would, problem. I would, right. if, I, if I would have met Peter Kenneth, I would say, mm. work on this thing in the background. Time is coming, and when you take your stand, let it be known mm. that it's you who have come out, have looked at the country, I've looked at the options that are there, and for the benefit of this country, I'm coming out on this line, on this, on line. this party. Now, there's a question of values, because if yesterday he had a problem with uh, Jubilee, mm -hmm. but now he's back. Let me start with you, Dr. Nikal, since you're here, and you're a member of the Orange Democratic Movement. Mm -hmm. Why are you in ODM and not in Jubilee or Roots Party? Okay, first of all, before I went into politics, you know, I was in, in, in government, and actually... That is when I had uh, interaction with the with with with, with the Honorable Raila when he when in the coalition government, and I saw a lot of uh, a progressive approach to things. Like I'll, I'll I'll mention one thing: this social protection that is going around very much. I was in the Ministry of Gender, and we started it, and his office was actually very keen, although it was the minister was not directly in, in, in his office, to support the issue of social protection for orphans and vulnerable people, for elderly persons. And I said to see this, I can see in somebody who is actually looking at, at the benefit of the country at large. Because the, the, the greatness of a country lies in how it takes care of its weak. So that attracted me. So, so and, is it and, 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 and so far, uh, what I'm seeing in ODM is a progressive approach. Sometimes we will look tribal because many of us are on that line. But look at 
Uh, if you look at, we are probably the largest party. We are probably the most diverse. So I'm in there. And I, I must say that the issue of tribalism will, I will not escape being looked at like that mm. because I'm there. But I come from somewhere. Yes, so but, I have but, to be but somewhere. My, my, my reason for asking that question is because mm. when we see politicians who, you know, jump up from one party to another, then we are left wondering what are the core values of those parties mm. that they are in? And if you're in ODM, is it because you are attracted to Raila the person or is it because they have certain uh, agendas for the country that you feel you subscribe to such that if tomorrow you are approached by Jubilee, you can confidently say, no, I cannot join Jubilee because the things that I would see progressive for this country are enshrined in the manifesto for I ODM. think I'm attracted by the manifesto. And I'll tell you, um, when I looked at the issue of uh, social health insurance, it started uh, with what is now become uh, universal health care. It actually started in 2000, about 2004, around the time of the coalition government. And the party, it wasn't, uh, it was NAC then. And uh, that was Honor uh, Bungilu. They were working in the same group. And again, I found that so attractive that to look at a way of finding healthcare that covers everybody. That is actually how it got Geneva, to Geneva from Kenya. Mm. So I see very strong uh, social welfare streak in the ODM party. Now, if you look at, and again, I've always seen when I, when I meet people from the other side, there's this tendency to accept that Kenya is a capitalist country. Let the only thing the other side would want is regulation that the, the only thing the government does is regulation. You get this comment, the people all say, government has, no, has nothing to do with business. Let business be run. Government has nothing, even running schools, even running healthcare. A lot of people are thinking that now with social health insurance, you get a big insurance, let the private sector now run, that. run it, and then the, the, the money that is, is paid. I disagree. Mm. You know, the recently, when there was a debate in parliament about Nairobi Metropolitan, I actually took a side that was probably not on our side because I think Nairobi needs the public transport organized. I know even people from our side uh, didn't like it and, and uh, Dwale pulled it back. Mm. But even if it were to come, I would convince people on our side that Nairobi... This, this is right. And this, this is, is right. It's something that and, is and, right. And I can tell you, if you were to ask people, and it, to me it's not tribal, if we go to the to the assembly, I, I have a lot of people who are not uh, lures uh, from all over that we actually talk to and, and discuss things. And we sometimes say, can we get a way that we can see this thing in a national sense? In, a, in another lens, yeah. not the tribal lens. No, the tribal line. All right. So and that, the, 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 the people uh, approach, the social welfare approach of the ODM party is a bigger pull to me than the tribal one. Obviously, politically, when I go home, that is an easier way to sell. Mm. But I have something deeper than just being and just a the tribe and, and being, uh, uh, having come yeah. from that area. All right, and one uh, last thing that I'd like us to look at is the question or the fact that some Jubilee leaders feel that the handshake, and Raila in particular, came to divide the party. And because of the handshake, it has rocked Jubilee. True or false? But let's listen into what some of the leaders had to say. Wengine wanatuambia ati wale wanafuata Ruto hawa support agenda ya president. Mimi najua ku support agenda ya president kitu ya kwanza ni ku support Ruto. Hiyo ndio agenda ya kwanza. Na mimi nataka niombe eh, rais wetu. Tunakuheshimu. Tunakupenda. Hivi tena unaona inakuja hii hiyo handshake hiyo hata wewe ujipange. Hiyo handshake iko na matata. What I know is that the partnership and the relationship between Uru Kenyatta and William Ruto is intact and permanent and pensionable. Ati President Apa, Deputy Ametengana, kuna watu ya Uru, kuna watu ya Ruto. So me, Ziju, is asa mimi ni mutu ya nani? Prof. Is it true, do you think, that uh, the handshake has rocked Jubilee? And this obviously leaves us with questions as to what interests they have. First of all, the Honorable Sudi, Honorable Sudi is my client, and I wouldn't want to comment on him. But for the other ones that have made statements, I would like to tell them the following. 
those utterances they are making is they are for their own benefit. Because the majority of those three people, or the, those three that have mentioned what they have mentioned, have got come some kind of cardinal interest. And if you trace them, the first question I would like to ask Kenyans is, can we do lifestyle audit of all of them except my my, my client. Why are you protecting your client? Should because you see of also confidentiality. Just I'm, still, I'm still representing him until or unless he fires me. But uh, <laughs> Moses Kuria, But surely, uh, if, 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 he's, if, if he's a leader and uh, a lifestyle audit uh, is on uh, all... Well, he's my client. Confidentiality still remains. And Murkomen, they should not be talking. If you look at the utterances these guys have had since or before the handshake, they are rocking this country upside down. And now when they are coming in to defy their own president, especially the Gatundu South MP, who was the first to support the president's handshake, followed by Murkomen, and now they have turned into gizzards by coming up with stupid utterances. Mm. I think I, they should, sorry, I'll use my language, and I'm sorry, you can, they can take me to court. They should be the last people to frog march their mouths on Kenyans. Kenyans know who they are, and whatever they are talking about, Kenyans are not taking them seriously, and that's as much as I can go. All right, Dr. Nikau, your uh, thoughts? On... Unfortunately, I, I, there's an element of mediocrity that around, surrounds our politics, so that when you start talking of an issue of, say, presidency, people quickly run to persons. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, by doing that, then we cannot discuss the major issues that the president is supposed to achieve to for with. the country. Right. To say that to talk about presidency is to talk about Ruto. That's well, trivializing well, it. Trivializing it. Mm. Even if, if I was uh, the deputy president, I wouldn't want somebody like that to be my supporter. You must be big. Kenyans must look at you, and a child from every corner should actually look at you with admiration. But when you start by saying, if it is presidency, it is rule, that again is a campaign. Because during a campaign, you have looked at the qualities you like in a person, the qualities you like in a party, and you have therefore decided on the basis of these principles that this is. Then you now sell that person and make him uh, in, the incarnate of all the good things mm. that you want. But for them, uh, again, this is what I was saying. The people around uh, the deputy president are the people who are really putting this badge of campaign on him. On him. Because, and again, the handshake, so, some process has taken place. I don't know why we are not letting uh, 14 people have been picked. They are going to come up with things that are going to address the things that hurt us most. The building tribalism, bridges corruption, initiative. Right. And so on. Mm. Because talk about corruption. Talk about tribalism. Talk about security. Election. Talk Election. about devolution. Mm. If those things are done well, then every Kenyan will benefit. Mm -hmm. So when you start saying uh, that rubbishing that effort, then you must be saying, I love the status quo that gives me benefit. And if this handshake is about this, then I don't want it. Again, then you make the other person, the deputy president you are campaigning for, look like He's totally opposed to the principles that are being um, laid out, laid out mm. in the handshake. Right. And I want us to wind up because of time. Professor, your closing comments? Yes, these guys have gone as far as saying that the late president of this country's body should be exhumed, exhumed for lifestyle audit. Well, <laughs> Kenyans, uh, let me address you in the following manner. Take these people with a pinch of salt. The country is gone in the drain, and we might end up like Somalia, the Sid, Sid Baris uh, style. President Uhuru, wherever you are, you are a strong man, and we like you for the moment for what you are doing. Let those who are letting you down carry their own cross. All right, Dr. The, the, the principle of handshake that are looking at the, the, the four, five or so issues of tribalism, corruption, security, and the devolution are so noble that I would say that the two leaders that came together should actually nurture them and make sure that they come. And I would ask all Kenyans, let's see what this process brings. Mm. Let's not scuttle it mm. because we are thinking of 2022. 20, and about the fight against corruption, let us also support this fight. Even if you have seen some that have not yielded fruit as we expected, this new effort, let's support it. 
Lifestyle audit, let's agree that there should be a lifestyle audit. If there are structures and legal issues that need to be addressed so that we do it properly, those are the things we should address. It should be addressed. Thank you, gentlemen. That's Professor Wajakoya, who was with us here on uh, Political Point, and also Honorable Dr. James Nukal, Member of Parliament for SEME. It's now 26 minutes to 8. We're going to take a short break right here on Morning Express. But do stay with us. We have updates of the World Cup, but also later on, we'll be looking at your money. So don't go away. We take that break.